So there are videos online. I'm sure we've seen any of a variety of version of them. They're often attributed to a certain type of woman with a certain type of name, but we like people with that sort of name, and so I'm not going to even say it. I think it's an unfair thing that we do. But videos of sometimes women, often men, uh, everyone behaves this way in these videos. When they get something they don't like or something happens that they don't want, they freak out, right? These are videos of, I don't know, I saw the other day a woman, there was a mariachi band on the beach and this woman was just yelling at them for playing music on the beach when everyone else loved it, but there she is, she hated it. And so she yelled at them or, you know, images, images of, I think it's a great name and I hate that it's a thing. That's why I didn't say it. Or, you know, men swearing at women, for, or waitresses for getting the order wrong, or, or someone hears a no and they demand a yes, right? All of these videos of, of these public freakouts online where these people do not respond well to hearing the word no. They should learn from our Torah portion. We're in Ve'et Hanan. It's the end of Moses' first discourse to the Israelites. Right? It'll be the start of the second one, and it opens with Moses pleading to God to let him enter the promised land. Adonai Elohim, he says, O Lord eternal, let me, I pray, cross over and see the good land on the other side of the Jordan, that good hill country in the Lebanon. Moses had been punished for his lack of faith when he struck the rock instead of speaking to it. And so God says, you cannot enter the promised land. And here he begs God to let him enter. And as Moses relays God's response, but the eternal was wrathful with me on your account, would not listen to me. The eternal said to me, enough, never speak to me of this matter again. Go up to the summit of Mount Pisgah and gaze about. Look at it well, for you shall not go across the Jordan. And then God continues by instructing Moses to pass his leadership on to Joshua. God gets angry with Moses for saying, please let me go in. God says, enough! If any of us have had kids or nieces were babysitting or whatever it might be, enough! God says, you will not enter. You may look out upon the land though, and you may see, you may, you may charge Joshua with taking over the leadership. So Moses prays for, to God for something here. He asks God for something. Moses, who has this special one-on-one -on -one unique relationship with God, and God does hear him, and God responds, but God responds with no. Sometimes this is true for all of us. We pray to God, let my loved one be healed. Let me get this promotion. Let me understand what I'm supposed to do. God hears our prayers, the text teaches, but just like with Moses, sometimes the answer is no. And unlike, unlike those internet celebrities who hear no for minor inconveniences, for us, sometimes the no can affect our whole lives. And this no can be so hard to accept when our loved one is hurt or sick, or we ourselves are hurt or sick, or we lose a job, or we lose a friend, or we face any number of insurmountable obstacles. Sometimes it feels as though it's a punishment, right? That God is angry that God is uncaring. And so what if we saw it another way? Rabbi Amy Kalmanovsky, PhD, she's a professor of Bible at the Jewish Theological Seminary. She comments on this apparent anger that God has towards Moses and this response of no. She says, while Moses interprets God's response and behavior as anger, one might also see a nurturing hand in God's allowing Moses to see the land and assuring him of an in integral role in passing on leadership to Joshua. In other words, Moses only hears the negative. He only sees the negative. He only hears the no. He interprets God's response as anger, or maybe he's mad at himself. And Rabbi Kalmanovsky suggests, what if Moses had seen God's response differently? The no is still there, and that can be upsetting, and God also provides a nurturing hand. God takes Moses up the mountain. God lets him look at the future that he has brought the Israelites toward. God lets him embrace Joshua, knowing that he has secured their future. 
Now, I'm not suggesting that we hide our anger in moments where God's response is no, or our grief, or our sadness, or our confusion. These things are real. When a loved one has passed away, or we lose a job, or we don't get that promotion, or someone receives a terminal diagnosis, then grief, anger, sadness, these things are all appropriate. And I wonder if we can also see that nurturing hand. What if we can also see the beauty in the world, or find purpose in our lives, or take pleasure in the good things, even if they're also bad parts, right? The people who come out and support us in times of bad, or the, the open freeway that we happen to catch on the way, anything like that. It might not be right away, but hopefully, in time, I pray, we can see it. Psalm 84, 5, which we sing on Saturday morning, says, Ashrei yoshvei vetecha od yehalalucha selah. Happy are those who dwell in your house. They will sing your praises forever. This word, ashrei, asher, osher, means happiness in the Bible, or it means blessedness. Those who dwell in God's house, those who see God's hand, nurturing hand in the world, those who find gratitude and appreciation even amidst the darkness, they are happy. They are blessed, even amidst the sadness and grief. So let us not live our lives like those internet folks for a variety of reasons. Instead, let us learn from Moses' despair and be able to see God's nurturing hand even when it might be hidden. And in that way, even amidst grief or sadness, may we be blessed. Amen. Take a moment to try to find God's nurturing hand in our own lives. And I invite you to rise as we turn to our handouts for a prayer for the state of Israel by Rabbi Erica Ash. Avinu Shabbat Shemaim, Shechina Makor Chayinu, Tzor Yisrael V'Gaolo, together. Sovereign of all the world, shield Israel beneath your protective presence. May all the inhabitants of Israel know physical safety. May they find the comfort of community as they grieve together. May they experience a renewed love for their country and its people. Guide Israel's leaders as they balance the necessity of safety and security with the suffering of the innocent. May they act wisely with determination and deliberation. Implant within Israel's citizens compassion, strength, and resolve. May they be nourished by our love and support. Our prayers are linked with the prayers of countless others as we remember your ancient promise from the book of 2 Samuel. I will establish a home for my people Israel and will plant them firm so that they shall dwell secure and shall tremble no more. I will give you safety from your enemies. At this time of danger and grief, may we have the audacity to pray for peace, just as our ancestors have done each time they were threatened and terrorized. Natata shalom ba'aretz. We pray that the people of Israel find wholeness and no tranquility. We pray for shalom in the land we love. Amen.